Hi everybody, how are you doing? I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. I hope everybody is doing good this evening. And I already see we have a bunch of people already online watching and stuff. And as always, I always appreciate all the support. So um, this time, hold on one minute. Oops, let's lower this here. Hold on, sorry. Hold on one minute. Technical difficulty. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Oop, there we go. All right. Got it. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Little technical difficulty is that I got a moderator helping me on the side and she is on the iMac. So I forgot to like take off the sound off of the iMac because I don't want that sound to like go over here. So anyway, we got that done. So we got it good. All right. I am still working off of my macbook because i don't trust my imac because that last couple of times remember i've kind of like fell off track so anyway let's let's talk about today's topic we're talking about the rise and falls of profits and fees and everything so i don't know if you guys know but the world is like what the heck is going on over here all right i don't know if you guys have noticed going to stores um filling up your cars with gas and everything like that. Things are up there. Prices are rising like crazy, all right? I mean, I've even had people like come up to me and I get all pissed off because they're like, their 401ks are going down. Um, everything is like, it's kind of like, really like, whoo, it's, things are going on, right? Now, let me tell you, um, what really hit me and how it all started for me okay it all started with a bobbin and i'm going to show you what the bobbins look like okay for those that um, um have multi-needle machines they might be familiar with this type of bobbin this is a um magnetic cord bobbin and you use these a lot for the multi-needle embroidery machines now i usually stock up pretty good on all of my supplies i usually like to buy in bulk but i saw that i started to run low on these bobbins and, and i have plenty of the black i just i was looking for this in the white okay when i went to go look at the place where i usually buy which i usually get my bobbins from allstitch.com and i try to buy them in bulk right I saw that they sold out. So I was like, oh, okay. So they just, they sold out. No big deal, right? So I go and I said, you know, where's the, where's the next place I like to go buy my stuff? So I said, let me do a search on Amazon, okay? Well, I did a search on Amazon, nowhere to be found, okay? Now, I want to share something with you guys. I'm going to share my screen right now because I want to add this on here because I want to show you what I find in Amazon right now. I'm going to type the uh, magnetic bobbin on here. And I'm going to show you right now. We're going to look. And I want you to check out these prices right now. Okay. Now, I noticed that these prices are kind of funky. All right. They are up there. $58 for a box. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? And I'm going to I'm going to switch back cuz I want you guys to see um to tell you guys something, right? When I was searching for these bobbins, okay? Um when I before this whole craziness with the prices have been going on, um I was paying $43 for a box of 100 bobbins. When I looked this morning, Okay, now I notice that some of the prices on the Amazon website has changed. I saw a box of those bobbins for $70. Okay, that is a 67% increase in a price for a box of bobbins, 100 pack. Now, I also noticed that there was a lot of price gouging that was going on with these bobbins. And I saw that people were taking the boxes of the 100 uh, bobbins, if they had any, and they were cutting, putting them in 10 packs, and they were selling them off as 10 packs, but they were selling them for like $2 a bobbin. 
So I was kind of like, this is like crazy, all right? So this is like a shortage in the bobbins, right? So I'm kind of like, this is like wild. So I saw an email and Angela from our Facebook group had posted the email because I got the exact same email from Etsy. And Etsy announced that it is increasing its fees to from 5% to 6.5%. So that's 1.5% more, right? So the thing is, I started thinking about, okay, what's going on here and how does that affect us as embroiderers and as sellers, okay? So of course, what's going to happen is, you know, you're going to be spending a lot more money in buying the supplies that you need in order to produce these products. At the same time that you are spending more money in creating these products, if you are using Etsy as your selling platform, what's going to happen is that now Etsy has announced that they are increasing the fees in order for you to sell their pro your products on their platform, right? Now, don't get me wrong. This is how I see it, okay? And some of you guys may disagree. But the way I see it is, okay, Etsy really doesn't do a lot. We, we say a lot of the work, but we're saying, but when we say they don't do a lot of the work, we're kind of like looking at it like, they're not really the creators of the products. They're really not, okay? What they're doing is they're the creators of the platform. But the way I see it is to create a platform such as Etsy and to also attract all of the buyers to Etsy, that does take a lot of work, okay? So you can't take that away from them, all right? They have created this awesome platform. They are, they are attracting the buyers to go to the website to you know purchase items and all that work is worth something okay and at the same time this is another thing that i look at as well right um everything in life goes up in price all right i remember um when i first moved to the state of virginia and i paid 98 cents a gallon in gas now could you imagine paying that now for a gallon of gas okay even though now i know that the prices are up there but everything does go up in life. That's just how it is, all right? You just have to hope that as things go up in price, your salary and everything else goes al al along with it, all right? So I kind of, in a way, understand because Etsy is a business. They're in a business to make money, all right? And if they kind of stay status quo and always forever say, I'm just going to charge 5% for the transaction, and they do that for the next 20, 30 years, you know, it's not really going to be very profitable for that business, all right? So am I happy about the 1.5% increase? Of course not, because... To me, as a, as a seller, you're taking away more of my profit. But as a business person, I understand the move. I understand why they have to make that move. And I got that. So now let's, let's, take a, let's think about this as a pers from that perspective as well, okay? They have to charge more money in order to maintain their business to continue to grow, okay? Well, me as a producer of a particular product, I have to also look at now when I use this platform to sell my item, okay, which I'm going to I'm gonna throw it out there, Etsy is not my only platform that I use to sell, okay. I also sell locally as well. And there's some people that also, they don't just sell on Etsy, they have their own Shopify accounts, and they have other ways that they also market their products as well. They have eBay and all that other stuff. There's so many different other ways for you to sell your products. Etsy is just one form to do, uh, to sell, to push your products. It's just one form. There are plenty of other ways. But you have to look at it from, all right, as, as me, as a business owner, I already know that the price of bobbins have gone up significantly. Now, just, just the bobbins alone kind of like threw a bell on me. And I was thinking, all right, we're just talking about a bobbin, okay? So what we're going to do is, you know, I'm also got to look at my other expenses. I got to look at my uh, stabilizers. Are those, are those prices going up? Um, I have to look at my blanks. Are, the, are those prices going up? 
Um, and then I have to also think about, are there other ways that I can obtain those supplies that I need in order to produce my products? And I think there's a question or something that was said. What happened? Bobbins. They were talking about Bobbins. They used that brand and they found another brand. Oh, they found another brand. Okay, well, please share. <laughs> what is the other brand? Who who was it? The, the Crafty? Crafty yeah. Oh, Juanita. Okay, she got the Majira Company Magnetic Bobbins instead. I've used them before and they are good. You have to pay shipping. Thank you, Juanita. I'm going to check into them too. <laughs> So that is, see, that's, see, that's what I'm talking about. And Juanita's already on it. That's, that's like what I was talking about. Look at the supplies that you're using and understand the prices went up. That's fine. But now you have to do is, can you find other suppliers? Which is exactly what she did. She probably said, okay, they're going a little crazy with their prices here. Okay. I can't pay $70 for a box of bobbins. What other brands of bobbins are out there that are similar? Because to be honest, are we brand name Pacific? Not really. I just want the bobbin that works. That's all. That can give me the end product. A bobbin that when I stick it in the machine, the machine will be able to embroider the product spotlessly, you know, flawlessly, and give me a good quality product at the end. That's all I really care about. I don't care if it's bobbin A, B, or C. Who cares? And that the price is right. That I care about also. Because remember, the prices of your supplies and the fees that you're paying is really going to impact your profit at the end. Now, another thing that I went through my mind was there are several people that are in different positions of what a profit means to them. Okay? So it's kind of like, when somebody, you know, says things like this person is successful, you got to remember everybody has different definitions for different words, okay? What, a, what you consider as a successful person may not be something that I consider as successful, okay? Just like when somebody says, oh, that person got a lot of money. Well, <laughs> you don't, <laughs> what, what you consider a lot of money may not be a lot of money to me. So everybody has different definitions for certain things. The same thing with profit, okay? Um, to me, all right, profit means that you are making the, the amount of money of return that you feel comfortable making or that you want to make on that actual product, okay? Now, for some people, they just want to re recoup all the costs of the, the, the items that, you know, that, that was used to produce that product. That to them is a win. They really don't care too much about that little extra and stuff like that. Now, I happen to have been one of those people until Cardito went to college, okay? Then when Cardito went to college and I had to pay for his dorm and all that kind of stuff, well, I kind of just started to care because that little extra that went over the amount of the materials, that's the money that I saved to pay for his college. So, you know, like I said, profit is different for everybody, okay? Everybody has their own vision as to what they want their profit to be, okay? And, you know, it's it depends, all right? So, knowing that. And so, Bila, she closed huh? her Etsy. She closed her Etsy? She did, and now she's just doing word of mouth. There you she go. That's mouth. another. Yeah, you have to do what's right for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to do what's right for you, okay? You know, some, and, and there are a lot of people out there that don't like the Etsy uh, selling prop platform. They don't like the way the business is run and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're not in tune with the fees. They just don't see it. Some people like to just sell local, just like uh, Miss Carpenter said, you know, she closed it. She preferred to just do the, do everything word of mouth. Maybe that's very profitable for her and she's okay with that, you know? So, like I said, you know. This is how I see it. It's the same thing. I give people the same advice with this as even when people come to me and say, what's the best embroidery machine for me to buy? It's on you. You define what success is. You define what how you want to run your business. You define what is, what is it that you consider a profit or a win-win for the business that you are establishing, okay? So, you know, um, for me personally, um, I thought about, you know, when I saw the price of the bobbins going up, 
I then started looking at the other items and I started looking at the prices for stabilizer and all that kind of stuff. And I, a while back, a couple of happy hours ago, I had talked about embroidery pricing. And one of the things that I was talking to you guys about was how to create your own embroidery pricing sheet. And that is where you can um, jot down how much uh, would do you wanna charge per thousand stitches? How much does a sheet of stabilizer cost you? How much does a bobbin cost you? How much do you wanna change for, uh, do you wanna charge for uh, color changes, right? Of the thread, right? Because especially if you're on a single needle machine, you actually have to pull out every every um, thread and you have to re rethread your machine for every color change, right? So you may wanna change that, you know, you may, I mean, charge that, you know, some people feel, say, okay, I'll charge 10 cents every time I have to change a color or 15 cents or something like that. So with the different pricing that's going on, and if you really think about it, okay, you shouldn't create your embroidery price list once and then forget about it and then say, okay, 20 years from now, I'm going to use the same embroidery price list. That really doesn't make sense because like I was saying about, you know, how I was talking about how when I first moved here, the prices of gas were 98 cents. Well, guess what? The prices of stabilizer, the prices of thread, the prices of your bobbins, um, you know, the prices of machines, they're going to change. Okay, they're going to change, right? Sometimes you can buy a machine and you can, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you go to a sewing machine, a sewing shop or something like that. You look at an embroidery machine and I say, how much is that multi needle machine? They could come on and say, okay, well, today the price is 11000 right? So let's say a year and a half passes by, um, prices go up, inflation goes up, everything goes up. And then I look at that same machine and then I say, how much is the machine? And they say 12,000. Well, what happened to the 11,000 you told me last year? What well, price has changed, okay? So as time goes on, I recommend that you look at your embroidery price sheet every six months. Look at it, look at how much you're actually, you know, your supplies are costing. Recalculate your embroidery um, price sheet so that you can make sure you have a clear understanding of how much you are spending per item, okay? That way you can keep track of your cost, right? Then also take a look at the different platforms that you're using, whether it's Etsy, eBay, or Shopify, or whichever it is. Make sure you have a clear understanding of what your fees are and how much it's costing you to use that platform to push your products out there, okay? Make sure you have that clear understanding because believe me, that bites into your profits as well. Once you have all of that, then you can sit down and you can say, okay, I have this one kitchen towel. This is how much it costs up front. This is how much all the supplies cost to produce this. And also, don't forget your time, okay? Your time is precious. Your time is valuable, okay? Even for those that have regular jobs, you don't just show up and not get paid okay you get paid for your time so make sure that that's part of your um, pricing sheet as well so update all of that and run the numbers play with the numbers and see what profit margin is comfortable for you that is really the best thing you can do now um you know i know a lot of people are freaking out and stuff like um angela was like oh my god they went from five to six six i think it's six and a half you know, I gotta be honest, I wasn't shocked, okay? Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if eBay or Shopify or any of the other selling pro uh, platforms that are out there follow suit, okay? Um, a while back, a couple of months ago, we all heard about Cricut and how they were thinking about, you know, um, something with their subscriptions, okay? Um, that they were going, I think it was, um, God, I don't even remember. I know they were doing something where they were going to charge per per download, I think it was, per download. Even if you had a, a prescription for um, all access, they were going to minimum, I think it was like maximize the amount of downloads you could do per month. And then they were going to charge you for it. People were really upset about that. You got to understand, it's like, you know, companies are out to make money. 
They all are, okay? And if you're selling, think about it, it's the same thing. You're out there to make money too. So the thing is, you just have to really sit back, take it in, understand where all the fees are coming, and make sure that you calculate it in your stuff, okay? Now, you know, it, it can, it can um, really suck too. Uh, because sometimes you don't want to charge too much for your items either. Because me and my girlfriend were talking about that. You know, we were having a discussion about that because I was telling her, I said, you know, they increased the fees. So if you really think about it, the question at the end of the day is one or two. Who's going to eat up those fees? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be you, the seller, or is it going to be the customer? Okay. And this is the thing. You got to remember when you are selling on a platform such as Etsy, you're not the only one selling and you're not the only one selling that item. There are lots of people out there that are selling items that are very similar to yours. Okay. I'm not the only person that sells kitchen towels or dinner napkins. There's lots of people out there also selling pillows. There are lots of people out there that are selling a lot of birthday shirts, a lot of embroidered items and stuff like that baby clothes and everything so of course you're competing with each other and then at the same time mellow stop he has his squeaky toy and then at the same time you have to remember you have all these increased fees right so you got to be conscientious also about how you price your items you don't want to price it so that it's so high and then People are not going to buy from you because they're going to be like, why should I buy from this person? I can go buy from that person. The prices are lower. But you also don't want to go too low where you might as well just give away your item for free. Because the only profit you're seeing at the end of the day is probably a buck or two. To me, it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you got to think about your shipping and all that kind of stuff. Because I don't know if you guys noticed... Um, you know, the United States Postal Service, they upped their fees in January, okay, or was it in December? I think maybe it was in December during the Christmas time frame. They increased their rates, okay? So everything is eventually going to go up in time. So it's going to depend on, you know, how you price your items, how you watch how things go, you know, fees and everything like that. And you really have to sit back and you really got to do the math. And at the end of the day, you really got to figure out what is going to be the best profit for you, okay? What is it that you feel comfortable with, okay? So, you know, it's just something that really is, it's like, wow, you know? Um, the bobbins, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. At the past, I, I wrote it all down because I went and I checked all my old invoices. I paid $42 for a box of bobbins, and I paid uh, $43 for a box of bobbins. And it's worth 43 on the magnetic bobbin company. Yep, see? And then um, this morning when I went online and I noticed looking at Amazon right now, they lower their prices, but I was just um, hearing that the stock market went up 800 points, which I'm kind of like, good. But I'm wondering if that kind of caused people to now change their prices a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Now they're kind of like, oh, I can't price gouge like I used to these past couple of days. And I had put an order in for two boxes of magnetic uh, magnetic uh, bo uh, bobbins, and they were $50 a pop. And now that I just went and showed you guys, and I saw they're back to 43 you know I'm going to be canceling that order for $50 a pop. Or when they show up, I'm going to be returning them, and then I'm going to order ones for 43 Because why would I want to spend an extra $7 on a box of bobbins? It's, you know, it's like, it's the bobbins, all right? So that's just how I see it, you know? But watch your prices, guys. Watch your prices. Um, you know, pay attention to, to fees and all that kind of stuff because that can really hurt your bottom line, okay? You really, you know, you know what kind of bottom line you're looking for. And, you know, don't chip yourself, okay? And so, so um, let me see. That is really, and I am, let me see, it's 8.30. Let me look through the, the comments and see what you guys um, think about everything that's going on. And if you guys have an Etsy shop, what do you guys think about, you know, that that increase in the fee? I mean, I, I was kind of like, woo, that was, hey, Nana, how are you? Hey, Yolanda. Let's see. I see Miss Max. How you doing? I'm, I'm glad you're getting better and stuff. Um, 
I see Sassy and Robin, Portia. I see Jeannie and Miss Max. Um, hey, Cheryl, how are you? Um, I see Iris and Robin and Shirley and Alicia. Oh, I see a lot of people around here and stuff. And what are you, what are you guys experiences about, you know, what you're doing? So Madeira Company has the bobbin, ma uh, magnetic bobbins. And you know what, uh, Juanita, thank you so much for, for posting that. Because I am going to check them out. Now, I am going to tell you, moving forward, because of what happened. And I don't know... Um, for those of you that use magnetic bobbins, and I'm writing down this, this thing right here because I want to go check them out. You know, there was a time where you found nothing, no bobbins. You didn't even find them on Amazon, anywhere. And so it was like a supply shortage, okay? And I was just kind of like really concerned. And I'm usually pretty good at keeping a bulk, right? But the problem that I started doing was I was buying bulk. Like I would buy like five boxes at a time. And then when I'm down to my last box, I would order another five. Well, with this situation that just happened, trust me, I'm not going to be waiting till the one box anymore. Okay, because then even though I started to really run low, and then what I did was I went to Manassas and to the, the sewing shop that I usually go to. And I went to Susie and I asked her, how many magnetic um, bobbins do you have? And she was like, I have a box. I bought her out. I bought, I told her I want every magnetic bomb you have. I said, I, I, cause I need them because you know, my, my sales do come. And the thing is, I don't just work on the sales that I get off of my Etsy shop. You know, I also have a lot of local sales because during the Christmas time, I posted a lot of the golf towels and everything. So where I live, there's a lot of business owners that, that live around here. And because they found out that I did embroidery, a lot of them have been coming to me to do their business shirts. Um, I have one lady that does the dog shows and I did a video on that. Um, you know, she has champion hounds and they compete. And so I do all her dog jackets and her grooming jackets and her sweatshirts and everything with her logos and stuff. So, you know, it's just, there. there's a lot of um, business that I have been getting locally. It really did, um, you know, it grew. I was amazed at that. I was really was, you know, because I, I was just expecting to just sell golf towels and stuff. And then what ended up happening was people were like, oh, so what else do you do? And then when they looked at my Etsy shop and they saw that I do more, they were like, oh, can you do this? And I was like, oh, yeah. So it's just they've been keeping me very, very busy. So, you know, um, but I needed my bobbins because <laughs> those are the bobbins that I like using because they're really great with attention. So, um, Juanita, I really do appreciate that you put that out there and stuff. Um, yep, Cheryl, the prices all around are outrageous. And it's, it's and Cheryl, it is everything. I don't know if you guys noticed food went up, everything went up. Because things are a little crazy right now, you know. Um, so, it's just kind of like, ugh, you know. Um, Jeanette, you are bringing the customers onto Etsy, at least for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hey, Harmony, how are you? Angela brought directly from the company for $43. Okay, I'm going to have to be, I'm going to definitely have to do that. I'm definitely, I did not even think about doing that. And I, and I am going to do that because I can see that you guys are doing that. Hey, Miss Banks, how are you? Hey, Wilma. And I see Brandy out there. Hey, Fabulicious, how you doing? Or fab, yeah, Fabulicious32. Hey, Teresa. So what does everyone do with the empty bobbins? Okay, Teresa, this is what you can do with the empty bobbins, okay? Now, if you have the SC1900, you end up with the, the plastic case, okay? One of the things that I recommend that you do is just keep a handful handy. And I'm going to tell you why. Sometimes, let's say you're embroidering a towel, right? Let's say I, I, um, somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you embroider a towel for me? Um, well, you know, towels you can see from the back and the front. Sometimes you want your bobbin thread to be the same color as your top thread. So what you could do is you can want, use those plastic cases on your um, SC1900 or your your flat, flat machine, okay? And you can use those to, re, to wind up a bobbin with that color thread that you, excuse me, that you need, okay? So, um... Keep a handful of them, 
Teresa, don't throw them all away. Ooh. Excuse me. Don't throw them all away because you'll need them, okay? Um, you don't have to keep all of them, but just just keep several. Just keep keep about like 20 and put them in a little, little zippy bag. Put them on the side so that whenever you need to wind your own bobbin with your own color thread, you have empty bobbins and you don't have to go and buy new ones, okay? So um, that's what I would recommend you do and stuff because that's, that's what I do. Now, when it comes to the bobbin of the magnetic thread, once that bobbin is gone, you end up with the little the little um, center of the cord. You have to throw those away. I don't know of a way for you to you reuse those. I don't think you can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to um, throw those away and stuff like that. So, you know, but uh, yeah, um, Angela Company 43. That's, yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, Hey, Lake Ridge, Virginia. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Um, I also have two stores that sell my products and we're okay with a small raise in the price. I was lucky. Yeah, you know, and I did, um, like Miss Carpenter mentioned that she, um, she did a small raise in her price. In my kitchen towels, um, I had kept my prices consistent until the end of December, right? So when Christmas was over, I looked at the bestseller towels that I had. And what I did was I did increase my, my prices by a little, okay? Because the way I looked at it is I was making a pretty good profit on, on my towels. Um, but I was like, let me just adjust it a little bit more. Now, I will say this. I am glad that I did that for the simple fact that now that Etsy has upped their fee, okay, the transaction fee to six and a half, I'm really not going to see that much of a difference in my profit because I already had increased my price. So it, you know, it's it's okay, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes you do have to, you you have to in, in time, you know, you have to up your prices and stuff like that, you know. Um, hey, Walk by Faith. Hey, Wilma. Hey, Custom Creations. Um, it's a domino effect. Yes, Iris, I totally agree. It is a domino effect. And, you know, it's it's, it's sad, but, but that, that's just how it goes, right? It just, I mean, you know, every, you know, think about it. I mean, we're all in business to make money. No one's, no one's in business to lose money. So it's like, you know, if the supplier okay up their prices of course the vendors that buy those supplies and bulk they have to up their prices because they have to make a profit margin and then us as embroiderers we need these items right because we have to have these these bobbins these stabilizers these threads and stuff we have to have them in order to actually create our embroidery so you know and then you know we have to think about the blanks okay if the prices of the blanks go up you know, that's going to cause our prices to go up. So it is. I mean, what's sad, too, is when you really look at the domino effect that Iris is talking about, at the very end of that domino effect, the person mostly and most of the time, unfortunately, that is going to get hurt the most is sometimes is, is mostly the customer. OK, because what's going to happen is nobody wants to take that loss. So at the end of the day, it's going to be the customer that's going to be looking at the price and is going to be looking at the item and has to make the decision if that is something that they're willing to spend for that product. Which is why I say it's very important that when you're producing these products and you are creating, you know, your embroidery and stuff like that, you got to make sure that you are up on your game. You got to make sure that you are delivering quality, quality work. Because what's going to happen is you don't want the customer to look at the item and say, wait a minute, this was not worth $20, okay? I, this th this should have been cheaper because they, they find that the stitching was horrible or that it's misaligned, it wasn't hooped correctly, um, it wasn't stabilized. After they washed it once, the, the item just crumbled up and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you are producing quality, quality, quality items. That is so, so important and stuff. Um, let's see. 
So you were they were asking about what to do with the empty magnetic bobbins. Mm-hmm. And Robin says she uses them to wind her colored thread on. Oh, is there a way to do that? I didn't know that. I didn't know. Well, Robin, thank you for, for posting, putting that out there because I didn't know that you could do that. I have been throwing away those core things and now I'm going to keep a handful and I'm going to figure out how to do that because there are times when I want to embroider with the same color in the bottom, but I don't for the simple fact that I don't know how to to wind it okay now I have seen that they have those bobbins in different colors right that you could buy them in different colors but I didn't know that you could actually use that and wind your own bobbin so I really do appreciate that oh now my battery is running low on my Mac I got that white cord right there sorry yeah can you, can you pull it yeah oh I just noticed that I got it's going to fall asleep soon if I don't plug in. There you go. I'm plugged in. All right. So, <laughs> I was going to say, whoo, that, that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> and so, But, Robin, thank you so much for putting that out there. I really appreciate that because um, I didn't even know you could do that. So, I will definitely um, look into that and stuff. Hey, Wilma. Okay. Um, oh, I see Olivia from, from Florida. At first, I was upset, but not surprised. Up oh, from the crap. Yeah, me too. I mean, I was, at first, I was kind of like, really? You're going to charge more? You know, but then I started to think about it, and I was kind of like, all right, Jeanette. You know, you just got to think of it from a bit, from their perspective, okay? Like everything else, you got to think of it from their perspective. They, they're out to make money, too. Even though I ain't gonna lie, you know, went through my mind was, you know, the billions this company is making? <laughs> and they're they're all they're doing is facilitating the sale. You know, that's what that's what went through my mind. They're not the ones that are like, you know, getting the customers' orders. Well, they are, you know, because they you know, you gotta order it through the listing, but I was like, we're the ones that really have to interact with the customers to make sure that we understand what they want. We're the ones that have to, um, you know, fill the orders. We're the ones that actually have to make the item. We're the ones that have to ship them out. All they did was put us and the customer together, and they're making billions of dollars, and now they're going to up their, their fee. That's the first reaction that I had, seriously. But then I said, all right, Jeanette, you know, it's all about – capitalism making the money at the end so you know they you we can't you, you know reasonably if you really think about it you can't expect Etsy to have the same rates for the next 20 years you just simply can't it just wouldn't be it's not smart it's just not what what it is Etsy made yep they made record profits last year they didn't need to raise anything but they're great yeah Harmony you know that was my reaction too. <laughs> I was kind of like, you know, really, you know, but you know, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So I kind of looked at it as for me, is there still value in it? For me, yeah, because I, I do get a lot of sales from that platform, okay? And at the same time too, is I kind of use that platform in two ways. I use it to sell my own products, and at the same time, when I have customers that are local, okay, and they want to see samples of my work and stuff like that, I kind of use the Etsy shop as a portfolio, okay, because what happens is I'll give them my business card. Like today, I went to a, a tea party, and someone was like, oh, you have an embroidery business? I said, yeah, and then, I, and then they were like, oh, and then I said, here's my Etsy shop. This you could go there and you can see a sample of my work. What I like about having the Etsy shop is, let's say someone wants to hire me to do some type of embroidery, right? I can tell them, go to the Etsy shop. It shows you a sample of my work. At the same time, while they're there, they get to see how many people have purchased from me, okay? And the reviews that I have gotten on the products that they've purchased from me, okay? So I love it because, you know, they're going to, when they log in, they're going to see, oh, she's an Etsy star seller. Okay, so that's the first thing that's going to pop up. 
and they're gonna say she's very good with the customer service you know and everything um look at all her reviews they're gonna read all my reviews and I say okay people really seem to be happy with the products that she puts out there and then they can look at my listings and they can see oh look at her embroidery okay look at all the towels that she's making look at all the dinner napkins they get to do they get to see samples so I kind of look at at having an Etsy shop and and even if you have even if it's not an Etsy shop if you have a Shopify shop or if you have stuff that's out in um in uh eBay or whatever platform you're using okay that can serve not only as your store but also your portfolio where you get to show your work and you have your customer recommendations as well and reviews so people can look at that and they can read it so they kind of get a better understanding of the quality of work that you produce so that is something that you know that i kind of like you know look at it as from that perspective so i was just like okay that's fine you know whatever um let me see i wonder if those overseas sites are going up in prices well i imagine so cheryl i believe they they would um can you explain why the mag bobbins are good i just posted in facebook book and the repair store told me they're not good okay um Carp miss carpenter i use the magnetic uh bobbins for my multi needle machines the reason why they are good is because it helps the the bobbin stay stay very steady in the machine as it's turning and it's more consistent so what what it does is it really helps to stabilize the tension of the machine now um i didn't know anything about these magnetic bobbins they were just um given to me as a gift from the sewing shop that i purchased my machine from I was just using the regular bobbins, the, the regular uh, L bobbins, um, and I bought a whole bunch of them from um, Allstitch, and I liked them. They were okay, but when I saw, when she gave me the magnetic bobbins, I just liked also that, one, you know, first of all, I didn't have to think twice about what was the right way to insert it in the case, okay? You, you look at it and right now you know, you know, by, just by looking at it, the dark side, which is the magnet, is what goes straight inside the case. So you don't have to look at it and say, oh, is this supposed to be this side or that side? You just know right off how to put it in correctly. And then because of that magnet, the tension always comes out good. So, um, you know, I don't know why the repair store told you that they weren't good, um, I probably would have asked them what their rationale for it not being good was, and what was it that they considered to be the best bobbins to get to the machine. I mean, could it have been that maybe the repair shop through, through time maybe sees that maybe the magnet does something to the machine? I don't know. Um, but it would have been interesting to find out what their rationale was, you know? And that's the other thing too. Sometimes when, when people say, oh, don't do that, it's bad, ask why. I always ask why, okay? Sometimes it's a personal preference, you know? I mean, st and stuff. Like even when you ask people about embroidery machines, you say, oh, what's the best embroidery machine? You, you know, some people will say, oh, get this brand or that brand or that brand's not good, that brand, why? Why, do you, why is it not good? To, why do you consider it not good, you know? And, you know, you just have to sometimes kind of like, make your own judgment call you know um i personally have used both and i prefer the magnet the magnetic ones um you know i think they are a little pricier they are than the regular ones but i like the magnets a lot better because i feel that they run smoother on the machine and i don't have an issue with any of my tension so um let's see um you must make sure you have a nice amount of supplies. You do. And Iris, I'm usually pretty good at that, of, how, of buying them in bulk. What I am not good at is keeping the bulk. Because usually what happens, like I said, it the um, with the bobbins is I bought like five boxes. When I was down to my last box, that's when I said, let me buy another five. What I should have been doing is when I got down to like three or something like that is when I should have put my order in. 
but lesson learned right that's how you learn sometimes the hard lessons is the best lessons you know so believe me i'll be changing my strategy on that um i love these towels and the color popped oh thank you the i guess you're talking about one of the um the the towels that i did for the um the dog show for the um uh, yeah for the lady and stuff yeah her towels came out really nice she was really really happy with the outcome she really liked the way they came out um all orders from canada went up Ooh. hey miss parker how are you Ooh, iris is gonna start growing her own veggies she ain't going to the grocery store no more i'm telling you those prices at the grocery stores have really skyrocketed and stuff um hey miss york please don't forget to hit the video a thumbs up oh yes thank you miss york yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and so um <laughs> Can I use magnetic bobbins with the uh, SE? Yes, you can. Okay, but there is something that you're gonna need to put in there. Um, you can use the magnetic bobbins are are called L L style L style bobbins. Okay, like the letter L. Okay, you know. Every time you do this, you you always think loser. You know, but it's not a loser. Okay, it's style L, the letter L. Okay. Now, there is a piece. There's a little piece, and let me get it for you guys so you can see what, I, what it is. Okay, you guys can see me, right? All right, so I'm coming over here to my machine, and I'm going to grab this piece. All right, this is what you need. Okay, here I am. Hope you guys can see this. You guys have this. It came with your machine, Okay. Now, let me show you the difference here. This is the magnetic bobbin, okay? And these, this is called an L-style. The reason why it's called an L-style is because it doesn't have a plastic case on it, okay? It's just this. This is the center, and as you see, let me, let me show you up close. I don't know if you guys see that right here, there's like little magnet. Let me turn it around and you see how it's very green. That's the, that's the part that does not have the magnet on it. But if I turn it here, as you see, this has the magnet, all right? So what you would do with this is you're going to pop this in your bobbin case in your um, SC600. Uh, or your SC 1900, or your PE. No, PE is embroidery only. So it would be SC 600 or SC 1900. Pop this in your bobbin case. Because these doesn't have the plastic casing, you need this to be lifted, because that's what this does. So you would take this and you would just put this right on here, like this. And this is how you would insert the bobbin in there, okay? Now, the just something to that you that to tell you though aretha is the magnet does not really help you with the tension on the um sc 600 okay now the reason why i use this a lot is because what i started doing is because i have this piece right here and it allows me to use these bobbins I have, I like to buy just one style of bobbin. That way it's a bobbin that I can use on all my machines. I'm not going around and saying, okay, I have to buy a whole bunch of the bobbins with the plastic on it, or I have to go out and buy the L style bobbin, okay? So I just like to buy one style bobbin and all my machines use it and stuff. Just makes it easier for me. So can you use it for your SC600? Uh, yes, you can. You can do that. And you can probably, no, yeah, you can use it, I think, for all of them. Because you, you can use it, you know, I've used this bobbin for sewing, too. I have. I use it for sewing, too, not just for embroidery. So, yeah, scratch that. You can use it for all of them. You just got to make sure that when you have the, the flatbed that you, you you add this piece in there as well. Okay? Um, let me see. What else? Let's see. Hey, Sandra. Oh, also, some stuff you buy I see is from Super Punch here in Canada with exchange rate. You save. 
They are out of Montreal. Oh, oh I'm in U.S. Um, Miss Carpenter. Um, let's see. Hey, Miss. Okay, can. All right, you guys are just exchanging food over here. I need to get myself in there. Okay, you know, I'm going to start opening up a garden back there. Right on the bag and what you have in it. Um, are magnetic? No, they're not only for, uh, hey, uh, Crafty Patty, they're not just for the multi-meal machine. Like I, was, like I was just telling um, the other lady, you can use these for your flatbed as well. You really can. You can. Um, you just have to make sure that, you know, you have this little piece because it has that missing casing. That's all. So you want that piece so that it can just lift it up a little bit, okay? Um, let's see. Let's see what other questions we have. Um, all trickled down. Yep, okay. Um, hey, Jeanette, just to let you know, Angela ordered a bobbins from the company that makes them. It's called Hab Dash. She paid... Oh, okay. I'm definitely going to have to look at that and stuff. Hab plus dash. Because if it's cheaper, $32.45, that's a, that's a better price, okay, than the what I was paying before. That I'm definitely going to be buying from them as well. Thank you so much for letting me know that. I didn't know. Um, hab, hab, I've never heard of Hab hab plus dash so i'm definitely gonna have to check them out and stuff um let's see let's see hey paulette how are you um yeah etsy be making some money i don't know who created that platform boy, but i know they live in pretty now boy let me tell you i wish i came up with that idea i'm gonna maybe i should create my own little platform for everybody to create a shop on you know i'm like oh my god Oh, I, Lucy uh, says she sends back the magnetic cords to the company since they provide a shipping label. That's not a bad idea, too. So I'm going to have to, because um, I wouldn't mind doing that, you know, um, to so that, you know, recycle. That's a pretty good thing to do. I'll have to go through my studio trash and pull out the magnetic center. I use the plastic bobbins to wind the color thread. But I do that by hand, so I guess you could use with the magnetic ones. Hmm. Okay. I gotta figure figure out what you're saying, Robin. Okay. You can you rethread L bobbins in case of multi nails? You know, Ali, I don't think you can. Um, I'm gonna look into that though. I am. Um, cause that would be interesting to see. I, I never seen anybody do it, but hey, you, you, you never know. You're always learning something every day. I think the fee is less than paying for its own site. Go daddy other with Etsy. I pay then I sell with others. You pay no matter what. And you know what? Olivia is bringing up a very, very good point. Think about this too. I mean, I know everybody's pissed off about the Etsy, the Etsy um, fee, but you know she's bringing up a very, you know, she's got a really good point right now. Uh, if you read her statement, okay. Um, think about this. What she's saying right here, and I and I'm gonna post it up here because you know, like, let's say Shopify, right? When I was looking at Shopify, you pay a fee, okay? And you're paying every month $30 or something like that, regardless of whether you make a sale or not, okay? With Etsy, I pay 20 cents, unless they up that too. I don't know. I didn't read that they up the 20 cents listing fee. I think it's still 20 cents. Who knows? It's probably a quarter now, but okay. Um, when you have a listing fee, you pay that, that money up front, Okay, and it's 20 cents. And if, and you're paying the 20 cents for quite a while. If I remember correctly, I think the listing lasts for maybe two or three months. I'm not sure. Okay, but it, but it is a while. And it's just there. It's there. It's on the platform for people to look at and stuff like that. When does the fee really kick in? 
it kicks in when you sell okay so let's say a whole month passes okay and she brings up a really good point whole months pass and you have all your items out okay and let's say you got like 10 items you pay 20 cents an item right so what did you spend like two bucks something like that right so all right so that means two months you spent two dollars but if you were to um let me see if you were to use uh you know shopify right those two months cost you sixty dollars so she brings up a good point so sometimes you just gotta think about it you know you gotta weigh the numbers and you gotta think about the scenarios too think about your different scenarios right because if you're not pulling out sales like that then it's, it's kind of like all right you just spent three dollars per month okay and this is the other thing too think about the service also that etsy provides they're bringing customers to you all right they're the ones that are doing a lot of the advertising they're the ones that do the commercials and all that kind of stuff they created the platform if you go ahead and you have a shopify account and all that kind of stuff then what happens is you are the one that is going to have to bring the audience to you you got to do your own advertising you got to do your own marketing and all that kind of stuff and everything so that is a lot of work sometimes right so sometimes it's better to just you know you got to pay for sun you know if you if, you know you're paying for a service you truly are so olivia thanks for bringing that out because that is something that we do have to consider you know i mean are are we always happy when prices go up absolutely not we're not happy you know but you got to sometimes sit back and you got to think about it and sometimes you got to put things in perspective you know of course your initial shock is going to be like what the heck you know like they, they just lift that price up and you're going to be mad and all that kind of stuff but then you got to after all you all the emotions and everything you got you do have to sit back think about it and and really process it and, and weigh weigh the benefits right so olivia thanks so much for putting that out there because that that is a very very solid point you really did make a very solid point with that and stuff um Jeanette, those tiles will be, oh, thank you. Everybody did like that. Yeah, I have never looked at Gold Daddy, so I don't know. Um, Habdash is only for wholesalers. Okay. But you can always get a wholesale license. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't get one. Okay, you can always get one. Okay, so far, Etsy is an okay I can still make profits. I anticipate making more sales in the future, so I'll keep it. Nothing to lose with it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you just got to really, like, just, you got to weigh it. You got to weigh it and stuff. I just keep hearing about the magnetic bomb. Some, sounds like it would be beneficial. They are beneficial. I really love, the magnetic bomb is really are my, um, they're, they're my bobbin of choice because they really do work well with, the multi new machines, they really maintain a solid tension on the machines. I mean, they really do. I do have other bobbins that are not magnetic, okay, that I have tried. And I have them as backups for, like, emergencies. Like, let's say I wasn't able to get these boxes of magnetic bobbins, then I have these backup. And I got those off of all stitch. Um, and it's okay, um, you know, but... I like the magnetic bobbins. They really, they really are good. Um, let's see what else is out there and stuff. So, hey, Robin, how are you? Um, I sell my own and hand out cars and get enough outside orders. Yep. See, and there's different ways. You know, you just have to figure out what's the best way for you to sell your products. You know. Sometimes an Etsy shop isn't for everybody. Not everybody has to sell online, you know? It, sometimes if you get enough customers local, that's fine. And another thing too, craft shows. Some people like to go to craft shows. They like to rent a table. Um, I have a lady in my neighborhood that she sells wreaths. She does beautiful wreaths. I just got a, a wreath from her. You know, I bought one of her wreaths. Gorgeous work. And she does a bunch of wreaths and she does craft shows and she gets a table and she makes a killing so you know I mean it like I said there are so many different ways 
for you to go out there and sell your products and stuff not you know not everybody has to use the same forum okay you just got to find what works for you okay and you'll be fine you know and you know don't be afraid to try different things either you know sometimes you talk to other people that sell products as well you learn about different ways you know facebook is another great avenue as well okay i mean some people use facebook groups um you know sometimes they have yard sale facebook groups if you make certain things take a picture post it list it on marketplace is anybody interested some neighborhoods have swap and shop websites where they they sell stuff out of their house or whatever post it there you know and you can you can sell it i mean think about it. there's no fee there you just put it on your website you said okay i i made this shirt or this bag or whatever and um i want to post it does anybody want it? it's 15 dollars next thing you know you know you have a neighbor across the street saw it and they were like oh i want that 15 dollars i mean what fee did you pay there nothing you got a whole 15 dollars so you know there's so many different avenues that you can use you know so it's there's not just one okay so you just got to do what's right for you and stuff um mellow boy yes mellow is here um what is he eating oh god okay oh, all gone. right okay yeah but he's eating he, he just broke okay so uh Mello broke his ball. All right, so so much for this ball. Okay, didn't make it. This one's gone. All right, and stuff. He was a little under the weather. Had to take him to the vet. Uh, but he's doing a whole lot better, as you can see. Um, yeah, he is. He's a mess. Here he is, guys. You want to say hi, Mello? You want to say hi? Oh my goodness, he's a mess. All right, so um. He was a little under the weather, but he is doing great now and stuff. Um, <laughs> he's funny. And so that's my bud right there. Um, let's see. Do you have to remove the spring of the bobbin case with the magnet? No, I don't remove any spring. No, you don't, don't just, you just pop it in and that's it. Um, Okay, hey, Miss Queen. She said she just got a uh, brother persona, and it came with the magnetic bobbins. Yep. Oh, Miss Miss Lewis said they're only for the multi needle, not for the flatbed machines. Okay, I've been using them for the flatbed too, though. <laughs> but I've been using them with this with this item. But I don't think the magnets do anything for the flatbeds. Okay, so but you can use the L L style. It does work. Um, going to use them. Let me see. Let's see what else we got out there. Do we have? Okay. Oh, the SC that also brings a magnetic piece, and all you have to use is a rock. yes. And this is the way I use it on my SC nineteen hundred. And I think this is what you're talking about, right, Juanita? This little piece right here. And so this is what I pop in, and I use the magnetic bobbin for that and stuff. Hey, Barbara, how are you? I just ordered from All Stitch and it cost me sixty four for one hundred. Couldn't find them anywhere else, out of stock. Hey, Carbon, see they are. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Carbon. Uh, look on Amazon because I just literally, if you look at the beginning of this video, I looked on Amazon and they are back in stock and I think they were like forty three dollars, something like that. So, you know, take a look there and stuff. But um yeah the the prices really got off rage you know they they really went off the charts on this um let's see oh nana says that she uses the magnetic bobbin on her long arm you know i have to i know there's a couple of ladies in my neighborhood that have a long arm machine and i have to check that machine out i really do and stuff Ooh, I am I almost done toward the end oh my goodness okay um perfect timing yeah I think so yeah hey Susan how are you come in magnetic plastic or normal and paper with a metal center 
Oh, I'm glad you said that. Okay. Hey, Susan. Um, Susan talked about, and this is the thing. I have heard about the paper bobbins, but I have not purchased one or used one yet. Okay. And I've heard about the M style bobbin, but I know that my machines are the L style and stuff. You go, Jeanette. Open that up. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Can you get a plastic rewindable bobbins for most embroidery machines? Um, okay, you can get I get the I get pre-wind, pre they call it pre-wounded or pre-winded. They already come winded up the bobbins all right they already come with the thread and stuff i usually i don't wind my own bobbins unless it's a particular color that i need then i go ahead and i do that and stuff um if you have to pay you still have to pay for advertising no matter what yes that is true uh miss cruz you know um yeah i mean it's kind of like you know hey harmony um it's the way I, I see it with this whole situation, okay, like some people are really like pissed off about it, but you know, it's kind of like, I also think about it like where I live, right? Every time the year comes on and they have the new budget, HOA fees go up and everybody's like, eh, eh, you know, everybody's complaining about it. That's right. Mel's complaining about it too, right? Like this year we went up five bucks, right? And everybody was like, eh, five bucks, what are we getting for the five bucks, you know? But the thing is, let's let's be real, okay? I mean, things go up in price. That's just how life is, okay? Um, and, you know, we just have to make sure that we budget correctly, we write down the numbers, and we price our items accordingly. So that way we can make sure we make our profit. So it's just how things are, you know? Um, hey, Miss Banks, all you have to think about being on Etsy is so much better than having your own shop where you have to pay rent on a monthly basis and other expenses for having your own business. Miss Banks also brings up a good point. That's the thing. You have to think about all these things, okay? Like, you know, some people are like, you know, they, they own, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm one of those people. I would love to have a storefront. I really, really would, okay? And I have been looking at how much would it cost for me to get a warehouse or a storefront? Now, I ain't lying. I mean, the rent is, that's a lot of money, okay? And when I think about that, I'm kind of like, wow, then where is my profit going to be? You know, because I'm going to be working super hard just to pay my rent. So, Ms. Bank has a really good point. You know, if Etsy is providing you, and, and it's not just Etsy, okay? I'm, I'm just saying Etsy because that's what I use right now. But like, let's say you have eBay or another platform, you know, those platforms, did he just grab fabric? Okay, those uh, platforms and stuff, see, that's why you keep getting sick because you keep eating everything. All right, so sorry guys, um, hit <laughs> that dog. Anyway, so it's like all these platforms, you know, even though you have all these transaction fees, there, when you, when you really look at it, like if you had a yeah. storefront, you know, just like Miss Banks is saying, if you if you had a if you had actually rent a place, you're gonna be paying about like two three thousand dollars a month, okay? So giving Etsy six and a half percent of your of the price that you pay is it still in his mouth? Oh my god! Okay, all right, sorry, sorry guys. Um, you know <laughs> that dog's a mess. All right, so um. You know, that's a big amount of your, your, your profit, you know? So think of it from those perspectives, you know? Just think about it, you know? Because if you really start to think about it like that, then it's kind of like, well, okay, it's really not that bad, you know? It's not that bad. It's, it's doable, okay? And stuff. It kind of makes more sense. So, yeah, Miss Banks, thanks for pointing that out. Because that, you know, and I have been looking because I'm thinking, oh, boy, you know? Oh, Jeanette, veterans can get a vendor's license at no cost to you. Thank you, Iris. So I'm going to be looking at that. Veterans business license. Because we're veterans, you know, my husband's a veteran. So, you know, I'm I'm going to look at that. 
okay, and see. Because, yeah, that's something that I'm definitely going to have to look at. And so, oh, Oli, I met the plastic wheat pre-wound bobbins and use them. No, you can't use the plastic ones in the multi-needle machine, Oli. Believe me, I tried. That was the first thing I did when I bought the multi-needle machine home. I had the regular bobbins from my other one, and I was sticking it in, and it wouldn't close. And I was pushing and pushing, and it's because of the plastic casing. My, my machines have to have the L, the L style, which means no casing. So, no, you cannot do that on the multi-needle. That's a no, no. Yeah, um, Jeanette, I know this is off topic, but what do you use under dry fit sheets, shirts? Is cutaway enough? Wilma, dry fit sheets in um, allstitch.com, they have a cutaway stabilizer that's called Performance. Okay, look it up. Um, I have it here. Hold on. I'll be right back. Um, I think this is it. Yes. Okay, here it is. Oh, no, it's called Pro Stitch. Okay. This is the ones that I get, all right? And this is not opened yet, but let me open it and see if I can show you what a sheet looks like. These are the ones that you would use on those, okay? Because they would, there is, these are, they're textured, okay? Here, I'm going to open this so that you guys can see, because I, I got to show you. Um, I'm going to open this bag. So that you can see, because, you know, you want to know what you're paying for, right? So, because <laughs> these are, um, I'm not going to say they're expensive, expensive, but they're they're a little pricier, but it's for reason, okay? And stuff. All right. Now, this is Cutaway Stabilizer, and these are the ones that you would use for a dry-fitted uh, shirt. And they put these uh, staples on here. I want, I'm going to try to put this on here so that you can see. Look at the sheet and see the texture. You see how this is? See see how, how it is? The texture, okay? Mm -hmm. This is very different from when you have regular cutaway. When you have regular cutaway, it's just a flat sheet. There's no texture in it or anything like that. So if you are doing, um, I'm going to embroider on uh, dry fit shirts, okay? Because they're thin and they have that special material, these are the ones that this is the stabilizer that's recommended for those type of shirts, okay? And I want to tell you again, they're they're really they're called performance, but I know that they put pro on here. I get them from all stitch, and this pack right here that I have is the um five the eight by eight. And the reason why I have the eight by eight is because when I embroider on the dry sheet shirts. Um, I usually do logos on those shirts, okay? Because usually they want like a logo on there. So this is the perfect size for embroidering the logo, which is the 8x8, okay? So those are the ones that um, that that I use. And these are cutaway. These, this is not tearaway. These are cutaway, okay? So I hope that helped. Um, do you, you ever use a platform ever be with Etsy? I have not. I have never used that, uh, Miss Cruz. I have always just done my own um, listings on Etsy, and that always seemed to, to work for me. Um, and I gotta be honest, I never heard of the Everbee and stuff. Hey, Karen, how are you? Um, so, no, I have not used that at all and stuff. Um, so, oh, Mello, you're a cutie pie. <laughs> oh, my technician's. Um, said I shouldn't use magnetic bobbins on my single needle machine only in the multi needle machine oh Justin said that okay well then shoot alright now I don't know if you guys know but Justin the guy that um, that does Miss Banks uh, machines she does my he does my machines too and I'm going to tell you said that guy got it going on okay he knows his embroidery machine so Thank you, Miss Banks, for telling me because if Justin says get those magnetic bobbins away from the flatbed, I'm going to do it. Okay. But I do have the L-style bobbins that are not with magnets on them. So 
I, when I talk to him, I'm going to ask him, can I use those? I mean, they don't have magnets, okay? So maybe the magnet does do something to the SC1900. So, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to Justin about that because I want to find out if that's the case, okay? Um, let me see. They're on sale now for $43. Just look, Miss Carpenter. Yep, and you know what? I'm going to be getting those uh, boxes for $43 too because, um, no, I'm going to be returning those $50 because that's $7 difference. And I ordered two boxes, so seven, two, that's 14 bucks. I want to keep those 14 bucks in my pocket. Thank you. Um, you know, so I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm going to, mm -mm. so I'll be ordering more boxes and stuff. Um... Some people are angry about everything. Allison, that is just life. There are people that are pissed off all the time. But, hey, what can you do? <laughs> you know, that's just how it is and stuff. Um, oh, I use that on golf. Yep, golf shirts. The performance um, cutaway stabilizer is very good on golf, short, uh, golf shorts. Golf shirts, too. You guys can tell I'm tired today. I'm really, really tired and stuff. So, guys, I am going to say good night. Um, the stabilizer you showed us is sold out at Joanne's. You can purchase it with a coupon. I've been using that type for stabilizer for 30 years. Well, I Miss Banks, thank you once again. I didn't even know that I could get this stabilizer from Joanne's. And now I'm going to be going to Joanne's. So, it looks like... Is, did you just say, oh, it's sold. Okay, I thought you meant sold out. So, okay, then uh, you know you know how I do. I'm going to be there with my coupon, and I'm going to be hitting Joann's. And um, if Joann's is cheaper than Allstitch, then you know it's all about keeping the money in my pocket. So <laughs> I'm going to be going to Joann's with my coupon. Just like I tell you guys, like when you go for those embroidery scissors and stuff like that, you know, I am telling you, I mean, I, I, t I do tell you guys, you know, like, I'll show you guys if, if something's on Amazon. I'll show it to you guys. But I'm serious, guys. I mean, I know that you guys sometimes want to support me, and I think that's great. But if you can find the same product that I'm showing you guys somewhere cheaper, get it. Because I really do this to just help you guys, okay, and stuff. You know, so, I mean, I don't want anybody losing money, okay? If anything, I do this so that we can all prosper together. Okay, so seriously, uh, Miss Banks, thank you so, so much for letting us know about Joanne's um, having that stabilizer because I'm definitely going to look into that. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely going to be using that coupon and stuff. Thank your husband for it. Oh, thank you, Ollie. I appreciate it. He's retired Air Force 21 years, you know. <laughs> and of course, I met him afterwards, though. I didn't. You know, I met him after he retired from the Air Force. So I think I would have made a terrible military wife because if he had to tell me he had to move every four years, I would have been like, what? You know, <laughs> I would have been like, packing up all these embroidery machines. Let me stop. <laughs> so, guys, I am going to call it the night. I hope you enjoyed this evening with me. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, and like I said, every Friday at um, at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I will always, um, you know, be here to talk about anything and everything. Um, if you guys have a certain topic that you want me to research and find out for you guys, please let me know, and I'll do my best to try to get it on the schedule so that way we can talk about it together. Um, yeah, I have a Facebook group called Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. Please join that Facebook group. It's a great place for us to talk, share ideas, share information, even show off your projects as well, okay? So, guys, have a great night. Enjoy your weekend. And me and Mello, you want to say bye-bye? He is being so bad. I think he wants to play. Oh, my goodness. I think he does. I guess I better start tossing the ball with him, okay? So anyway, guys, I will talk to you guys later. You guys have a great evening. Please be safe. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.